Eflagen double. short to be drinking shitty beer welcome to another edition of bands bikes and booze reviews i've got one from belgium today and it is from the Aflagem brewery they're a bunch of liars well they're not really but on their website they say that they've been brewing for nearly a thousand years since 1074 that's not strictly true they are a brewery that is based in flanders in the Flemish Brabant, as it's known, that is a region in Flanders. And they base their name on the Afflegem Abbey, which was based nearby. However, the beer that I'm drink gonna be drinking here wasn't brewed in an abbey. It has got no Trappist or official Trappist stamps on there. That name has been applied to them by the great Satan that is Heineken. They rent the name Afflagen, or they use it under license, if you like, from the Abbey. They, I don't know why they use that. The Abbey has been around since 1074, but I don't know why they're applying that to the brewery, because the original brewery was called Op Ale. They brewed beer there. Heineken came along, took them over, and then used the name or used it under license from the Abbey, and they've called this Afflagen Abbey, and they seem to think it's perfectly acceptable to say that this brewery has been going since 1074, which it quite clearly hasn't. Anyway, just got that out of the way. That is in the open, so everybody knows. I've got the windows open here, so if you hear shouts, screams, gunshots, cars being set on fire, dogs barking, you know you're in shameless, the shameless estate that is Kent. Right, this is a double, okay, Belgian doubles. If you're not familiar with that style, they're very thick on the caramel malt. They use a lot of sugar in their ingredients. They have a quite strong, noticeable flavor that usually has a seam of spirit alcohol running through them. The ABV is reasonably high. The double and triple usually donates the ABV. This is 6.8%, so it falls under a double. Anything sort of over 7, 7.5%, 7 you're looking at calling it a triple, and it's usually blonde, but there are exceptions. And that really is all there is you need to know about doubles. They're quite nice. I've tried quite a few doubles in the past, they have been really nice. Vesmal do an absolutely amazing double, one of the best, Orval do one, and the one of the best renowned doubles is the Vesvaletarin double, which is absolutely amazing stuff, which I should get hold of and review one day. But what I was hoping to do was actually get over there on the bike, get to the Abbey, get the beer from the Abbey, film it all, and bring it back. But of course, COVID's just put, paid to anything I was going to do this year so there you go anyway let's get this beer checked out right it is a 330 mil bottle it is 6.7 percent oh sorry I do lie it's not 330 it's 300 and it is a Belgian double and of course as I say these usually contain sugar or candy sugar as they like to call it. Sometimes that gives it a little bit of a dark flavor, but the caramel malt also gives it a little bit of a dark flavor, that kiln type malt. But the two go together to produce a reasonably dark colored beer. It's got quite a sweet flavor to it. Most doubles have anyway. They're big on the caramel malt and the dried fruit. And as I mentioned before, they've usually got a seam of spirit alcohol running through it. So let's see if I know what I'm talking about whether I'm talking absolute crap. Mm. 
Right, the cap is off. And that is what the cap looks like. That is the logo for the Afflegen Brewery. I will get it into a chalice. A chalice is what they suggest. They have their own chalices. But the principle of a chalice is similar. It's just got a wide open mouth on it. That is very lively indeed. That has got quite nice head retention on that. And the head does look pretty good. And I knew that was all going to go in there because this is only 300 mil. It's 6.8%, so I imagine they're doing that to stop people like me and my ilk from necking it. But to be fair, these doubles are really rich. And I think anything more than 330 mil, you're really pushing it. So what are we getting on the nose? Wow, tons of sweet candy. That's what it smells like. You know the old candy cigarettes, do you remember them? That's what it smells like. I've got a feeling this is going to be a really sweet one, but there is a ton of banana in there as well. It's no, I tell a lie, that is not what I'm getting. Do you remember the sweet bananas, the sweet yellow bananas that you could get when you was a kid? That's what this smells like. Really nice. But again, there is a touch of dried fruit on there, dried dark fruit like raisins and dates and stuff like that. But you've also got some spirit alcohol on there too. It smells really nice. Oh, there's apple. I'm getting apple from that now as well. Like a, like a cooking apple. It's quite, it's quite pronounced actually. Or pears, no, it's pears, not apples. That is pears. It's very nice. It does smell good. And uh, I've mentioned before in these videos that I'm doing lately, this room is so hot, this head is gonna dissipate very quickly. So I'm just gonna get this down the hatch. Prost, as they say in Flanders. Mm, that's quite nice. It is quite sweet. The spirit alcohol is there. It's not as big as I thought it was going to be. There was a lot of dried fruit, but there was a bitter finish on it. I don't know whether that's hot bitterness, but it is there. There was just the right amount of carbonation. That isn't too obtrusive. And it just lets you know that the beer is in the mouth. The aftertaste is quite sweet. There's caramel. But there is a bitterness there, which I think is coming from the hops. And it does make a change, actually, because usually you're left with <clears throat> a sugary caramel sweetness that sticks to the palate. This isn't doing that. This is leaving almost like a spicy hop finish on it, which is interesting. Big caramel, big fruit, like sweet dates, black cherry. And the hint, the merest hint of toffee on the finish on that as well. But all together, that is really good. I am quite liking this. Mm. that's quite a nice one. Now I really had reservations about this. The alarm bells were ringing. A, because I Heineken own it, and I'm sure the bean counters at Heineken come along to all their breweries, have a look and just see where they can cut corners and maximize the profits for their shareholders. But I have to say, this doesn't taste too bad at all. That's really nice and it is different. It doesn't leave that big sticky caramel malt, which don't get me wrong, I do like. It hasn't got that on there. 
this has got this has got quite an abrupt finish on it it hasn't got that lingering finish and it's got all the flavors a double should have and all in all it's not bad the, the head retention on this is really good i have to say because usually where well, you've got that high alcohol certainly on the doubles and triples it doesn't last that long but this isn't bad at all there was a lot of carbonation in this but it's very fine bubbles and they're not obtrusive they're not abrasive but you do know they're there it's very nice very nice indeed and different so So what's the verdict on Aflagem? Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've tried one from this brewery. Reading up about them and doing my research on them, alarm bells did ring. You know, the whole, they've been going nearly a thousand years and then they're using the name under license. They're borrowing the heritage from the Abbey to use on their brewery and behind it all is Heineken. So that did ring alarm bells, but as I always say, and I will stick with this mantra, Good beer is good beer. I don't care who brews it, what they say about it. It's The proof is in the tasting. And I have to say, this is not a bad one. It is slightly different from all the other doubles I've tried. It has got a slightly bitter finish, which I normally wouldn't associate with a double. I would expect more sticky caramel, sugary type fruity goodness. Not really getting that. This is more, from my palate, I'm getting some slight spicy hot bitterness. But there is the fruity esters there as well from the yeast, the banana. Little tiny touch of clove, but a lot of dried fruit, which I'm assuming is coming from the malt. You've got a nice caramel malt, but you've also got the lots of dried dark fruit too. So it, it is technically fulfilling all the flavors, but they're just in different orders and they leave you in a rather confused state of mind if you know or you like your doubles. This isn't a bad one. <clears throat> I'm going to give that a 7.5 out of 10. I recommend it if you want to try just a little bit of a different double. And it's quite cheap, actually. I got this from Beers of Europe. They're on, I don't know whether they're on offer, but they were quite cheap. I think it was just over £2 a bottle. And yeah, they're nice. And if you like your Belgian doubles, I think you should try that one. Because if you try a Vesmo and you think you know doubles, try that one and it may throw you off kilter. Now, maybe it's just my palate, but that's what I'm picking up. I'm picking up a slightly bitter finish rather than a huge sweet caramel finish that I normally associate with doubles, but that's what I'm getting. So yeah, seven and a half out of 10, recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>